extraterrestrial bricks and site where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Uh, now, Putin proposes sanctions on the West and the media goes crazy. Now, at a recent cabinet meeting with the Russian government, it was reported that President Vladimir Putin proposed the possibility of limiting supplies to foreign markets of strategic raw materials. Now, these commodities such as uranium, nickel, titanium and a number of others should be considered provided that they do not harm the Russian economy, he says. Now, most people will think, well, why not? After all, the US is limiting certain goods to Russia by its trading partners and imposing sanctions on microchips to China. However, the West's media reaction has been immediate and hysterical. I mean, the markets, the financial markets and the trading markets reacted with immediate and significant price increases for things like metals and um, commodities. And the economic and specialist media outlets flooded with reports of serious concern. Now, it's surprising to see such a strong reaction from those who've imposed the sanctions on Russia. I mean, it's important to remember that the Western media constantly lies about Russia. I mean, they say that Russia is a country where basic amenities such as toilet bowls are a serious luxury and in short supply. Plus, its aircraft and missiles are constructed from chips, microchips stolen from Ukrainian washing machines. I mean, its industrial production is one stage up from the Stone Age, its technology is limited, and its country itself is little more than a gas station masquerading as a nation. Plus, it's a global pariah with limited influence on global affairs. In fact, Russia, according to think tank land in the USA, is Ivan with no friends. I mean, just the other day, so-called highly respected world experts were perplexed by Russia's apparent resilience in the face of adversity. I mean, for example, Foreign Policy magazine has stated that regardless of the extent and historical significance of the sanctions imposed by the West, they have not diminished Putin's capacity to engage in military action and aggression against his neighbours. And of course now, They've moved swiftly to assess the potential impact of Russia implementing its own counter sanctions. Now, the results of these uh, their analysis has actually been quite illuminating. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. This can be done by making a small donation, which you can do by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Now, everybody who does uh, donate gets a personal thank you from me. And I'm thanking all of you now for just watching, because that means a lot to me that you are all taking the time uh, your life to listen to what I've got to say. Now, for instance, should restrictions be placed on uranium exports, the US nuclear energy industry will not collapse, but will be brought to the brink of doing so. Now, while the majority of Americans are proud of their nuclear energy sector, it's worth noting that almost a third of the nuclear fuel used in the nuclear power plants of America is imported from Russia. Now, but despite the best efforts of Congress and throwing billions of dollars at the problem, there's no solution to that in the near future, as there's no clear alternative to the supply of uh, Russia's aggressive supply of electrons and neutrons. Now, Reuters has reported that uranium is at significant risk for the West. Citigroup experts have highlighted the difficulty of replacing Russian uranium, given Rosatom's dominant position in the global nuclear energy sector. I mean, after all, Rosatom is the world's leader in nuclear technology and is the largest producer of enriched uranium, which is the essential fuel for Western nuclear reactors. So Western experts have promptly sought to identify potential alternatives. Well, there's conditionally neutral Kazakhstan, which happens to border Russia and is its largest trading partner with first place in uranium ore production, but they've managed to avoid any issues. However, Kazatomprom's CEO made a statement that in the event of Putin's request for consideration on restriction of supplies, he would certainly act upon it. 
Easter did say that Kazakhstan is currently facing challenges in supplying uranium to the Western market due to sanctions that have disrupted the traditional routes of transport. He means through Russia. This has created an opportunity for Astana to sell its uranium to erect to China and to Russia. Now it's evident that Rosatom, which recently acquired the largest uranium deposit in Kazakhstan, is ranked second globally in the reserves, uh, it's probably involved in all of this. Now it's worth noting that Macron of France and Blinken of the USA were recently both in Astana begging for cooperation. In France's case it needs the uranium after being kicked out of Niger and Blinken because he's still attempting to thwart the Kazakhs alliance with China and Russia who they are close to and all are members of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. As usual, Blinken uh, attempts to uh, interfere but doesn't get anywhere. Now, a similar picture is emerged in the titanium sector. Russia accounts for a significant portion of the global titanium market, with a 25% of the overall market and 40% of the sponge titanium segment. Now, titanium sponge is crucial for the aerospace, aircraft, nuclear, marine industries, and VS. MPO Avizma, a Russian company, is the world's largest titanium producer with a comprehensive technological infrastructure. Now, according to the Critical Minerals Institute, Russia is the key supplier of titanium worldwide. And should it restrict the uh, supply, global markets would be severely disrupted. Now, it's notable following the start of the special military operation, Boeing and Airbus, obviously the major aircraft manufacturers, made a definitive statement rejecting the use of Russian titanium, citing a complete and unconditional refusal. However, once you look a bit deeper, it subsequently transpired that this was another bare-faced lie. The US and EU authorities quietly included their companies and the products in the small exceptions so they could totally build aircraft with the Russian titanium and aluminium and just buy it through third parties. Now, in the event that these companies cease to exist, there'll be no immediate alternative suppliers, or if there are, be difficult to find, expensive and time consuming to engage with. Now, another interesting development is regards to nickel. Russia is the third largest producer of both raw and enriched nickel after Indonesia. Now, following Putin's remarks, there was almost a 3% per increase in the price of nickel on the exchanges within an hour. Now, despite the bans on Russian nickel being uh, for trading at the London Metals Exchange, almost 40% of the nickel traded in the main exchange as LME is actually of Russian origin. The nickel story, if it continues, could have a significant impact on the West, particularly more so than uh, uranium and titanium. It's evident that the focus on the green revolution in the West is largely driven by the demand for rare earth metals in the wind, energy, solar panels and electric cars. Now, the West's primary objective is to gain a competitive advantage over China in this field. The China's primary use is for lithium, for electric vehicle batteries. In contrast, the US has placed its bets on nickel with demand for it to expect it to grow sixfold by 2035. So therefore, critical for the US to get its hands on the maximum amount of nickel it can and preferably keep the Chinese and others away from it. Now, following Putin's remarks, the Americans sought to expand their market presence. I mean, Indonesia and Asia has 42% of the global enriched nickel market, so it gives you an idea. However, this strategy has also encountered challenges. Indonesia has announced its intention to join the BRICS. And it's subsequently Russia's become one of the main suppliers of grain to the country, with exports increasing tenfold in a year. Now, while there's no indication that this will occur, there's a possibility that Russia and Indonesia will resolve their difficulties and differences amicably regarding nickel issues. However, the United States is unlikely to be involved in this potential resolution. Russia has long advised the West that it's more reliant on them than it is on, it is on them. So the realisation has already occurred and this marks the beginning of a new phase. 
I mean, so after two and a half years of the shock and awe, sanctions from hell, which didn't destroy the Russian economy and bring around regime change, the West is now living in fear that Russia could unleash sanctions on it, and that would further damage their already battered economies. Also, if it gets into an alliance with China over the rare earths and other metals, the West is likely to be in deep trouble. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and also share. If you've enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobrexinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button. Now, you do that, you can make a small donation and I would greatly appreciate it. Also, comments. Please do keep uh, the comments coming. I do love to interact with you and hear your ideas and your thoughts and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.